Eight of the streets every Monday night, 9 p.m. to midnight. All men, all crews up in here. DJ Absurd, you know, all men, DJ Absurd. Eight of the streets every Monday night, 9 to midnight. People, like I said, don't be strangers. We got a gentleman up here. He actually did a promo for us. He represents New Jersey. Yes, sir. A real, uh, and he's a hip-hop junkie. I like your shirt, hip-hop dummy. Show it to the camera right here real quick. Yeah, man, that's Let's the team right that. there. It's a group between me and my homie. But he's not here right now. But I'm representing for the brand. Okay, and this gentleman goes by the name of Cruza. Cruza, Cruza, you know. So what's going on, man? How's life treating you? Thank you again for the promo, and we finally get to meet you after two years when the, we gave <laughs> after gave the promo. Definitely, but you know, hey, better late man. than never. Definitely. You know, I always I, like you used to hit me up all the time, so I used to, like I said, man, I, I just made sure everything was correct before I came up here. Make sure I had you, something man. to talk about. So, so when did you start making music, start rhyming, you know, and getting right, into the right. this is This is my story of how, like, I fell in love, how I started rhyming. Uh, basically, when I was 13, I didn't really want to rhyme. I wanted to actually DJ. But I actually, but I had friends that rap, so they were like, yo, let's rap. And, you know, in our 13-year-old logic, we thought we could get a deal real fast, and I could get the money for the turntables and learn how to DJ and everything. And just you know, <laughs> take my spot in the back. But obviously, that didn't end up happening. Mm. 13 year old me wasn't really that smart and didn't really know much about the music business, obviously. So, did you ever start to DJ or you just started nah, rocking? Never, oh, never, 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 never got to it. Never got to it. I've had the money to buy turntables and it, it just went to something else. So, when did you say, you know, I'm going to step, step in the booth instead? Like, really uh, take it official? Like, when I, was, when I was like 17, that's when I got in the booth. Mm -hmm. And then I started taking it more official maybe around like 18, 19. Right. So do you have a new project coming out? Or what's uh, yes, on? I do. I actually have uh, two projects coming out right now. One is a, a EP with the Hip Hop Dummies, which is me and my and my group member Elmo Difoca. But don't say that name too loud. FCC will be finding you. <laughs> um, and I got my own, and I got my own solo album called Ode to Myself coming real soon. Okay. And where you're from, Carney? Yeah, I'm you from Carney. So you went to Carney High School and all yeah, that. Yeah, went to Carney High. Yeah. Oh, yo, they got the banging Portuguese restaurants up in there. In the yeah, it's all right. It's all right, man. Uh, you like that charbroiled food. I I'm, love all, I'm not really into the charbroiled food. I love all of that. Yeah. So, um, so I know from having conversations with you in your posts and your blogs, you're, ve you're very much a hip-hop dummy. Yeah, I, definitely. You know, and you're very much into the culture. Yeah. So, what really, so who are some of your influences in the rap game? My influences are, of course, you know, the Jay-Zs, the Nas's, the Biggies, Big mm -hmm. Pun. Definitely Nas has an influence on me. Eminem, mm -hmm. those are more of my favorites. Yeah, CNN, Paul mm -hmm. Noriega, those are my favorites, like hands down. Okay. Yeah. So, and I know, and I, I'm glad that you came to our radio show because on the promo, you seem like you're against um the the um the, the top forty commercial rap. Yeah, I, I like me and Face actually on our way here, we actually had a conversation about that. I don't really listen to to um, hip hop radio like that. I'm more of the classic rock kind of guy when I'm in the car. Mm -hmm. Either that or whatever I have on the iPod. Okay, so did you ever think about getting into the battle circuit of hip hop? Nah, I'm, uh, nah, nah. They, what they do, nah. I, I like I like making music better. Mm -hmm. There's something different about music that, like, I don't know. It's just it's just the way I express myself. I don't I don't, I don't think I really come off really great as being a battle rapper. Now my thing, like I was telling you again, though, do you have any shows coming? Or have you performed anywhere? I haven't performed yet. But I'm about to really get on the grind. I actually have a show out in Brooklyn, uh, April 26th. I just forgot the venue and everything. But hey. I'm getting the information as soon as possible. No, yeah. I mean, hey, mistakes happen. Things happen. Yeah. But I mean, so like that's the one thing I, I, I have to tell you because you and you, you you've never performed. No, no, no I'm not performed. I performed before. Yeah, I performed oh. before. Last time I performed was in 2010. Okay. Well, now the one thing I try to tell an artist is that because as you see, we're in a time which vinyl is dead. Yeah. Um. Cassettes have been dead. Definitely. CDs are going out the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, record labels no longer exist. So that and so you know. the music videos stations don't really aren't the around anymore. So the last thing left for an artist is their live performance. And if you can't perform live well, yeah, it doesn't project. It doesn't really project well. because because a lot of guys are dope MCs, and they have a lot of MCs that I know are like that. I'd rather just listen to them in the radio. Yeah. Or just put their CD or tape deck in or in the iPod, but I don't want to watch these guys perform. No, yeah. there, there, there are many artists who are like that. Then you got some guys when I first hear their music, I don't care for too much. When you watch their live performance, yeah, it's something to watch. It's, it's something to watch. Yeah, definitely. you know what I mean. So like, like a perfect example. I think Rakim to me is one of the greatest lyricists of all time, but he gets a pass for this though. Yeah, his performance ain't the music with the, in the background. Yeah, it's like his performance ain't it ain't the it ain't the best, but. 
He, I, he's I mean, the God MC still. Yeah, he's the God MC. But so that's why he'll get a pass for that. Yeah. But then you got somebody else who uh, uh, begin. Uh, then you got some other people out who aren't as lyrical. But then they got their performance. It takes you. That it's like wow. Yeah. You just want to watch them perform. Yeah. But do you feel your music is getting the recognition it deserves? Do you still think? Uh, yeah. You? As a matter of fact, yeah, man. Um, I have a record that I put out uh, last year that I did a video for called Coffee Shop. It actually got spinned on DJ Lord Jazz's show. Oh, so if okay. you don't know who DJ Lord Jazz is, Lords of the Underground. Of Lords of the Underground, for those that don't know. He actually lives in Paris, France now. Yeah, that's where he spent my joint at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I emailed it to him and he told me he loved it and he spent it. So I was on a radio station with Tretch. Stretch, Tretch was played. Um, the Cause and Knowledge got played. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a lot of other good stuff, man. So that's my thing, like I try to tell people with doing all of that. It's very important. You got to keep your connection. So now, somebody like you, I tell people, have you ever gotten a chance to go to Europe? No, I have not. Do you have a passport? No, I do not. But you can't go nowhere. That's why yeah, I tell people, um, like, this ain't nothing to award you, but yeah. I tell this to, to everybody, you can't talk about going overseas if you don't have a passport. Definitely. Nope. Um, <laughs> like, I don't know if you know a uh, poet, poet who actually, uh, he lives out in Kearney, too. Uh, I ran into him after he went on his, on his Paris run, and he was telling me, man, forget America, dude. Just go out to Europe. He's like, they love you out there. Yeah, and like I, they still like they still love like you know that genuine hip hop mm-hmm. out there, and that's, whereas out here is more commercialized. And the thing with it that when they don't have old school artists over there, when you when they love you as an artist, yeah, they, you're, you're still you're still popping. You're still popping. Yeah. Like the Temptations can still tour over there. All that. I mean, yeah, definitely. And all of that. So that's why I try to tell people. So um, so. So what do you, how do you feel about the hip-hop scene in the United States? I mean, cause, well, this is the main hip-hop scene that you know because you live yeah. here. So yeah, how do you feel about um, hip-hop in the U.S.? Hip-hop in the U.S., I mean, it's, it's basically, um, it's kind of like your choice, basically, of what you listen to now. It's kind of like the market for, for music now is kind of like, you basically, you know, you got to find another medium to listen to it through. Most people don't listen to, to the radio no more, so they listen to what's on Two Dope Boys, which is what's on the blogs, what's on Sirius Radio, and what's on, you know, like hip hop DX and all that, so you know. So it's mostly so that's where people find music. So that's where I listen to my music. So I think the scene is more like it's digital now, mm-hmm. very digital now. You know, it, you still have like you know the shows and different things, but not as much anymore. Like not in Jersey like that. I haven't seen that many shows recently. Well, I mean, well, New Jersey dog, man. But you live right next to New York City, so yeah, that too. But they're making it expensive to go. Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> Fourteen dollars to go through the toll. Thirteen. Twelve. Thirteen. Oh. Didn't the they raise it to fifteen or something? No, 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 that was the Midtown Tunnel. Oh. That's the Midtown Tunnel. But, I mean, but it's seven fifty either way, so seven fifty times two is fifteen bucks. You know, but but as I but as I said, I mean, you seem like you're a very humble dude, relaxed. You're wearing my favorite color. Yeah, man. You no, know? hey. Yeah, man. It's all about. I don't know, man. I, I'm not a rah rah kind of guy, man. I'm just really just laid back. You, know? mm. you were a fan of the Ninja Turtles growing up. Yes, I was. I, I could tell by the audio. You check my Instagram out, like, 90% of the pictures I put up all have to do with yeah. the turtle. Who was your favorite turtle? My favorite Ninja Turtle was Raphael. My mom was Michelangelo. Michelangelo. My side character was, was Casey Jones, so. Hmm. Casey Jones no. was my favorite. So did you buy the Ninja Turtles rap album when they rapped? They did that <laughs> no, song. I actually don't have that. I didn't even know they made a rap album. Well, I, I mean, well, they had that song for the soundtrack. That, that, that song, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll rock to that, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I'll have that's to play it tonight. <laughs> now, I don't know about all of that. I don't one. have it. <laughs> <laughs> so when is the album coming out? Uh, no, what day? Do you have an official date for the yeah, album? I don't have a specific date yet. We're still mastering it, but mm-hmm. it, sometime in April, maybe May. Mm-hmm. Who are some of the producers you have on that album? Uh, I actually have uh, DJ Porter Rock is on the album. That's the homie. He was yeah. it. I was with yeah, him yeah, the other day. Yeah, interview, yeah. You saw um, the uh, com- yeah I saw the interview I saw the interview yeah it, 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 uh, I, I do my homework before I come on to different shows and things like that so yeah I saw DJ Porter Rock was up here um I actually have a uh, DJ Matt Plus is on the album um mm. who else he did like three you know, two beats on the album I have uh, a producer from out in Germany named Rice Master Yen mm. and um or Frick who else do I have Nemesis but now he changed his name to Rome Nemesis for, from for, out for Amboy, Amboy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know he changed his name. Wow, people. I have Napoleon Suarez. My thing with the whole changing of the name is like people already know you by that after all these years. Yeah. It's like yeah, now you gonna... I, I didn't, I didn't get, I didn't get I it, and get I talked about it, and he never answered me back as to why he changed his name. Uh, it is, it is what it is. I like Nemesis, but uh, like but it is, a, it is a fairly common name amongst like artists and different things. So I, I can see why he would want to change it. But after all these years, it's like you know. Uh, but uh, we here now. That's yeah. him. 
So any um, but yeah, I must say I love how you have a, such a great love and appreciation for the culture as Word. absurd and I do, and that's why I think we connect. You know, yeah, you, definitely. And you, and you were a good dude. You came through. You gave us that promo. I was like, wow, he sent us. A, I was like, this guy named Cruiser. He sent us a promo. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Let, let's play. And I was like, yo, I like this promo. Yeah, this thing is dope, dope, man. Yeah, man. I'm glad. I'm glad but, you guys enjoyed it. But, I, but, but, I didn't know if you guys were gonna like it or not, but I just did it. But, and but, sent it to me. But, but but it's pretty soon we gonna need a new updated promo. I got you. But but, but when but, but again. When that time reaches, we worry about it then. Yeah, so, definitely, definitely. But again, you gonna stick around and do a freestyle for us? Uh, if you want me to, yeah. Of course. I mean, we're, premiering a, we're playing a joint, right? Yeah, we're gonna play a joint. All right, right we'll play right. a joint and do that. But I want to say thank you for coming through. Right, definitely, man. Thank you for don't, having me. Don't be a stranger. Come on definitely. back. Yeah, you know, as I, I should have told Porter Rock he was it. here. Like yeah. Porter Rock would have been love to come through. You know. Yeah, man. But th- thank yeah, you again. Me and Porter Rock, yeah, man. That's a good guy right there. Yeah. <laughs> Light it next time I see you, son. <laughs> <laughs> in the streets every Monday night, 9 to midnight. The, the big homie Cruiser is in the building. Definitely. You know, thank, thank you again. You. Yo, right here, dude. You know, I got you. And don't forget to, in every Monday, 9 to midnight, ustream.tv backslash channel backslash radio EAR2 at the streets. And no, hey, it's an honor. You on the last you're on the last show until we get set up again. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Alright. Stay up.